Hello everyone, here's Olga from Claw Europe. Welcome to this tailoring workshop. I really enjoy proper blazer and today I'm going to show you how to create one in Claw. We are going to learn about digital craftsmanship for tailoring while creating a beautiful blazer. If you have your own pattern, please upload it and sew the lining and the shell separately. If you don't have a pattern, we have you covered with the modular configurator and its block library. So, let's start! Let's see how you can use a blazer from Modular Configurator. Click here, Men, Jackets, Double Breasted or Single Breasted is a difficult choice, but let's go for the double one. Here you can choose between different uh, lapels designed as well as vents and sleeves. Just double click on the option you like. If you want to delete a modular frame, go to Modular, select the frame, and then press Delete. Then you can return to the simulation mode to adjust the pattern. For those of you who used your own patterns, please arrange and sew your pattern pieces. Here, this was already done. If you have vents, you would need to fold them inside with the help of arrangement tool. Move one arrow but keep a bit of distance between them. Don't forget to minimalize the fold angle and activate the fold rendering. Also, you need to add a sewing connection here, sewing line type turned, as well as on the top of the vent. It should be also turned. You can see it very well in the 3D window. And then you can simulate. Please pay attention that the front is sewing together. On the hem, you usually add around 3 cm to fold them to inside. For a real world blazer, you would also have a seam allowance on top, but in claw, we work without any seam allowance. However, here we would like to add those 3 cm of fabric that will work as a facing. Right click on the line, here, offset pattern outline. 30 millimeters and check create internal line. Here the right choice would be mirror, but it's not possible, so we'll go with perpendicular. For other pattern pieces, I can actually use mirror. And here again it would not be possible, so I go with perpendicular and I also need to change the setting of the angle to the second one. And we should add some sewing connections. Then we can fold this part later or now. So let's do it now. It's the same as with the vent, fold arrangement tool. Don't bring two arrows together too close. If it would be a circle, it would be around 5 minute difference. And don't forget to minimize the angle and activate the fold rendering for each line. And then we can simulate. I usually hide avatar and look from inside if some sewing connections are still missing. For example, this one, sewing line type should be turned, and this one. I'm just looking at the 3D window to see what I'm doing with free sewing. To fix the position of the facing for a 3D blazer, I recommend creating an internal line with offset of the facing height. So here it is 30 millimeters from the hem. Then make sure that these lines go till the pattern edges. And then you can sew the hem of the facings to these lines. For physical blazers, we usually don't sew the facing to the blazer. However, if you work on a virtual jacket, it's very helpful to prevent the facing from folding by doing it. Now we are done with this layer, so we can select it, right click, deactivate, and hide 3D pattern. Now we can show the lining and activate it. Here we also have a fold, and we would need to remove linked editing to fold just one side. Here I already have all sewing connections. 
and those that should be turned are turned. I also make sure that this pattern piece are on top of the other one. And then we can simulate. To prepare it for further layering, I'm going to make it smaller, so I'm going to use shrinkage weft and set this parameter to 85. Now this layer is much smaller and I can freeze it. Then we bring back the shell, so we show it and activate it. The next step would be to set this layer to layer 1. So if you unstrengthen it, you will see that this color is changed to green. And once you simulate, you see that this layer comes on top of the lining. And I prefer to keep this layer on strengthen. Then we can unfreeze the lining, simulate, and step by step return the shrinkage wave to 100% while still simulating. And the last step here, select the shell and return its layer to layer 0. After that, we can start sewing the lining and the shell together. Make sure you delete the sewing connection at the center of the lining or the shell, otherwise you will get overlapping sewing connection. And then segment by segment, you can connect the lining and the shell together. And make sure uh, to use sewing line type custom angle. I prefer to do it at the end when I created all uh, sewing connections. It's always useful to simulate in between to make sure that you did everything right. Let's look inside. Here, a lining of a physical blazer would usually have a little fold. For a digital blazer, it would add unnecessary complication. So, let's cut out the length of this fold to make our 3D model more stable. Right-click, Offset Pattern Outline, Retract, 30 mm. As you can see, now the length is match. Let's correct the sewing connection. For example, here, on the front facing, we would need to reduce the length on the one side and to add a little sewing connection to connect the front facing and the main pattern piece here. And then we can use segment sewing to connect the lining with the shell. Here, the sewing line type stays as custom angle. Here I forgot to retract, so right click, offset pattern I outline, retract. And it's the last sewing connection. Then from the inside I also see that I need to connect the lining with the vent. I'm looking for pattern outlines without sewing connections and connecting them. The sewing line type should be turned. It's always good to simulate to check if the sewing connections are right. Let's go further and add shoulder pads. Usually I change the pose to A4 size pose, but because this blaze is double breasted, I would actually prefer to keep it as A pose. Basically the problem can occur here, so we keep it as A pose. We are going to use standard shoulder pads from the library, hardware and trims, shoulder pads, Mail, 4 mm, right click, add to workspace. It's important to choose add and not to open. Here we go. You can hide other pattern pieces to check the position of the shoulder pads on the avatar. I also prefer to solidify the shoulder pads. Now let's sew them to the shell. It's helpful to show one of the front shell pattern pieces to know how to distribute the sewing connection between the front and the back. I'm using free sewing, so I connect one side to the front, sewing line type should be turned, and then the other side of the shoulder pad to the back of the lining. It should be turned as well. The next step is to assign layers. I set all front and all back pattern pieces of the line to layer minus one, here. And all front and all back pattern pieces of the shell to layer one. 
the shoulder pads are going to stay in between because they are on the layer zero. I recommend to keep all sleeve pattern pieces on the layer zero as well. To make this a bit dangerous simulation even more safe, let's freeze all pattern pieces under the arm and on the side of the body. Then, once we simulate, the shelter pads are going to find their way between the shell and the lining. Don't simulate too long, sometimes it causes some issues. Then, simply set everything back to layer 0 and simulate again. As you can see, now all issues are solved and the shoulder pads are perfectly placed where they should be. The secret of those shoulder pads is that each part of it has additional thickness collision that works like a usual shoulder pad thickness in millimeter. If you want, you can increase or decrease this parameter. Let's create a sleeve head. There is a fast workflow with creating a thin rectangle pattern piece, but I prefer to trace a pattern piece in the shape of the sleeve on top. It will look nicer. I use internal polygon line to create the line. Now it looks fine. Also, to make sure that this line intersects with pattern outlines, I'm using extend trim to pattern outline. Let the mesh redrape by simulating. Now you can trace it as a pattern piece and assign the fabric of shoulder pads. Then you need to sew it. Don't forget to turn this seam. And of course, you need two of those. And in 3D, you can perfectly use superimpose under. In reality, you would not have a sewing connection on the internal line, but here I actually prefer to keep the sewing connection. But I will just hide it by setting its normal map intensity and thickness to zero, so you don't see it in the 3D. Then simulate to see the changes in the drape. This pattern piece has quite high particle distance at the moment, so let's say it set it to 5 and also change additional thickness collision to a higher number. Let's continue with another construction feature, interlining. I don't need strengthen here. In Claw, if you select a pattern piece, you can add interlining to it by checking Bond in the Property Editor. It makes the trap of this pattern piece stiffer. You can also select between different presets of Bond. For my blazer, I would like to use Reinforcement. It's even stiffer. In tailoring, we usually add interlining to fronts and to front facings, as well as collars and collar stands. Then we also need to add some interlining to the hem of the sleeve as well as back pattern pieces. So here. In this case, I will simply select these lines and activate seam taping in the property editor. You can increase its width. So it would be the same bond with the same presets. Also, we need to add it here. Seam taping. For this pattern piece, the shape should be special. That's why we are going to use internal polygon line to create the shape for the interfacing. I recommend you not to create internal lines on top of the pattern outlines, but create them a bit on the outside of the pattern piece. Once the shape is closed, in the property editor, we can activate bond. For the back, we are going to do the same. Here we start on a pattern piece, press and hold Command or Control to create curve points, and don't press them if you want to create segment points. And again, please don't uh, create internal lines on top of the pattern outlines. The shape should not be perfect, but it's just nice if it's nice. Activate bond. Here I could create a pattern piece, but using zip taping would be faster. 
I think sometimes also sleeve heads have a bit of seam taping, so I'm going to add it here as well. You can hide the view of bond in the 3D window in the toggle bar. Now it's time to fold the lapel and the collar, and I'm going to uh, strengthen the relevant pattern pieces so they're a bit more stiff. It will be easier to fold them. And now using the fold arrangement tool, I'm going to select the line and fold the lapel. Here I'm going to maximize the fold angle and activate fold rendering. For the second layer, I will do the same. And then again the same for the collar. Sometimes I folded the second layer too much and it was a bit difficult to see it because everything was strengthened, so everything is orange. And my trick here is to unstrengthen this second layer and to use gizmo to bring this layer a bit to the outside. And here I also see that I have a sewing connection that should not be there, so I'm going to delete it. Another trick to make your simulation more stable is to sew the folding line together. Then set its intensity and thickness to zero. The same for the collar. Zero, zero. And actually, if I check the sewing connection, I think that the collar stand actually should be sewing together with the other collar stand. So I'm adding this sewing connection, change it to turned, and as well this line also turned. And then you can simulate. Very nice. Let's continue with closing the blazer. Here I'm going to use pins, so W and then press to place a pin. And with simulation on and with the help of gizmo, you can move one side to a bit to the front and then pull the other side to inside. Now I'm doing men's wear, so the left side is on top of the right side for women's wear, it's usually the opposite way. Please don't try to save time on this step, go a bit slower, especially if you don't have so much experience as I have. In my case, I will actually delete these pins and then set new ones a bit lower. And as you can see, I'm slowly closing the blazer. The result will not be perfect, but it should be good enough not to cause big issues. Then you can delete the pins. And now we can add some buttons. With the button tool, I'm clicking on the markings for buttons. Then for the other side, I'm going to use Select Move tool, right click, duplicate as button hole to symmetric pattern. It's just faster. And then with fasten button, you can fasten all those buttons. Make sure you deleted all pins before you simulate. And once you simulate, you get your jacket closed nicely. When you have a facing, sometimes buttons and buttonholes create some issues between these two layers. So you need to see how those layers are connected. If you right click on the buttonholes, you can check number of sublayers. Here it's two, so it's right, but the position of the buttonholes on the facing is a bit wrong. So you can just grab them and move them. Now it looks better. Sometimes this is not enough, then there is another trick. You can select baselines of the markings for the buttons and trace those little lines on the facing as well as on the front. If you don't have those lines, you can draw them. 
It's a bit difficult to see, but trust me, there are little internal lines. And if you have them, you can connect the corresponding internal lines with each other. So in this way, you fix this position of the buttons and buttonholes even a bit better. Since those sewing connections are just little 3D tricks, we would need to hide their visual representation by setting 3D SEM line intensity and thickness to zero. Right now, because of the pose, the placer is pulled uh, to the sides a bit too much. You can try to fix it by pulling it while simulating. Or the better way, you just change the pose. So I would choose here a for size pose. Then it's good to try to simulate once again to see if there are any issues. As you can see here, one button is fighting with the blazer. So I'm going to select all of them and deactivate their collision. Now they don't have any physicalities and can't fight with fabrics. And then with right click, reset 3D position, you put them on the place where they belong. Now we can adjust the position of the buttonholes even better. So here we actually have markings a bit differently. So I'm going to move it a bit to the right so the buttonholes match with markings. And I'm going to change bind position so that the button moves uh, alongside the buttonhole. Then we can work on the styles of buttons. So I'm going to remain this button to the front. And then change design. There are quite many options. Just choose the ones that you prefer. I will also make this one a bit bigger. And then I will create a copy of this style, rename it to sleeve because the buttons on the sleeve basically have the same design, but they're smaller. And then I will do the same process with the buttonholes. So I will rename the first one and make its size bigger. And then I create a copy, rename it and change its size. To create buttonholes on the sleeve, I'm going to right click on the pattern edge. So with the tool button, right click on the pattern edge. And here you can decide from which distance from the pattern edge you want to place uh, the buttons. So I just go at first I start with distance, then interval, and then I'm going to uh, increase the number of buttons. And right now interval is way too big, so I decrease it to 10. And then I just click on plus and 11 seem to match the marking. And now with select move button, I can copy paste them. So a bit to the left, a bit to the side, right click, convert to buttonhole. And then we can change the angle. And in this case, our sleeves don't have any vents. So it's basically a bit like faking real vents on sleeves. And here the buttonholes and the button are placed on top of each other. And uh, we don't need to fasten them because they are placed on the same pattern. To add button and buttonholes to the other side, we can simply select them, right click, duplicate to symmetric pattern. If you have pockets, you can simply trace them. But in this case, I don't have pockets and I'm going to create them. I'm using internal rectangle tool the size of the pocket would be 110 to 20 millimeters. Then simply move one side up. And now this breast pocket has a diagonal shape. And then you can adjust its position in 2D, checking your design in the 3D window. Then we create another pocket, 130 to only 4 millimeters. And then we are going to create a flap, so it would be 130 to 50 millimeters. And then I bring them together and to adjust the angle, I'm going to select them, right click, rotate, parallel to. And then I select the line for the uh, hem and then one of the horizontal lines of the pocket. And then again, we adjust the position on the blazer. Now they're a bit too close to the center, so I'm going to move them a bit to outside. And it would be nice if the pocket will match the dart. Usually the flap has rounded corners, so let's do it as well. Smooth curve, 
grab the corner, bring it up, right click, 10 centimeters, sorry, 10 millimeters and 10 millimeters. And the same on the other side, 10 and 10. Now, transform pattern, select these three shapes, one, two, three, right click, clone as a pattern. Now we can add bond to pattern pieces that need it. The internal shape for the flap we don't need, so we right click on it, convert to baseline. And then we can start sewing the pockets to those internal shapes. The flap can be connected to the other part of the pocket. Then we create a symmetric copy and superimpose all pockets. For the flaps, we use superimpose side. Here on the lapel, it would be nice to have a buttonhole, so we are adding the buttonhole to the facing and change its angle. Now let's start adding fabrics and I'm going to hide the view of the internal lines. And then in the library, fabric, there are some fabrics that uh, are suitable for tailoring, for example, this wool or this one. I quite like to use cotton gabardine as well, or cotton twill could be also an option. I'm adding one of the linings and then I'm simulating. However, I would like to have the lining a bit softer. So if I select the style of this lining and I go to its physical properties, I can change the preset to, for example, silk charmeuse. For the shell fabric, I actually want to do the opposite. So I'm keeping its physical properties, but I want to delete all textures and use another texture. So I found this texture and I'm going to auto-generate its normal map by increasing its intensity. And actually I would like to have it in another color, so I need to desaturate it. And then I would love to use one of Pantone colors, for example, Sky, Skyway, looks quite nice. Then I can also change the color of the lining. Okay, maybe not this one, maybe something more blue and something shiny. Looks great. Then it's also important to match the color of the buttonholes, so use the same color. And the buttons I would like to have in a darker color. And shiny as well. Let's add some final touches, also in connections, that secure the facings should be hidden. Right now they are visible. To do it, select all of them and then set the 3D line intensity and thickness to zero. And now we don't see them anymore. The other thing that you can do is to select all pattern pieces that are rectangles or almost rectangles and set their mesh type to quotes. Another good thing to do is to add additional thickness rendering. So for all pattern pieces that are made of lining, I'm going to set it to 0.5. All pattern pieces that are made of the shell fabric are going to have additional thickness rendering of 1. And there is a special case, a pocket flap. It actually should be made of two pattern pieces, but here we are going to fake it by changing its additional thickness rendering to 1.5 and activating double-sided. And the last thing, sometimes buttons are sinking into the fabric. What you can do is to select them and increase their thread length to one or two millimeters. That's all for the tailoring workshop. I hope you learned something new that will allow you to create your own perfect blazer. Enjoy the rest of the user summit. Bye.